Okay, and welcome to the tutorial on how to find the inverse of a matrix. The objective for this one is you will be able to find the inverse of a 2 by 2 by hand. And this will not take too long. So let's say we've got a matrix. Um, again, you have to have a square matrix. You cannot find the inverse of anything other than a square matrix. So we've got this matrix A, it has elements A, B, C, and D. A inverse, which has this symbol, okay, the, the symbol for an inverse has the little negative one up in the exponential area. So A inverse looks like this. So whenever you're finding the inverse, I'd like for you to use this fancy little symbol here. Okay, it's got two parts. First, we have a scalar. And that scalar is simply going to be 1 divided by the determinant of matrix A. Okay, so find the determinant by do the little fish thing from the previous tutorial and put that number um, over 1, or under 1, I guess. And then you're going to multiply that to a little matrix here where we're going to switch some things around. The principal diagonal elements A and D are simply going to swap locations, so they'll be D and A. The other diagonal elements, the C and the B, will stay where they are, but they will become the exact opposites of what they were. And that's it. That's, that's ultimately how you find the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. Okay, You find the determinant, you put 1 divided by that determinant as a big scalar out here as a fraction, and then you do the little switcheroo matrix here where you swap the A and the D, and the B and the C stay where they are, but they are uh, opposites. Not very difficult, so let's look at this first example. We've got matrix B with these elements here. So if we're going to be finding the inverse of matrix B, that's the first thing I want you to write down. That's the symbol for inverse. Okay. We're going to find the determinant of matrix B. So let's go ahead and go off to the side and do that. That's that little fish thing that we learned on the last tutorial. Okay. The, the, in, excuse me, the, the determinant of that, 5 times 4 is 20, minus negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Again, that turns into a positive, and we get 26. So that's the determinant. So 1 divided by 26 is the scalar. Now we've got the matrix that we need to construct. So the principal diagonal elements are the 5 and the 4. They're simply going to swap locations, so 4 and 5. The other two elements on this diagonal, the 2 and the negative 3, stay where they are, but they become opposite. So 2 turns into negative 2, and negative 3 turns into positive 3, and that's all, folks. That's how you find the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. Now, I prefer to keep the scalar, which usually is this ugly looking fraction, I like to keep that out here as a scalar. Some uh, teachers, some books might multiply that in like you would a scalar, but unless this, uh, this fraction is going to make these numbers um, still remain as integers, I'm going to keep it out here. Usually the inverse is not the end result. Usually we're going to be using this inverse to multiply to something else. So I think it's just easier to keep the scalar out here. If you see uh, some problems in the back of the book that have some weird fractions or decimals in here, it's probably because they multiplied the scalar in and reduced the fractions. I prefer it to look like this. So I do have one try problem for you here. And if you would pause at this point so that you can try this, I'm looking for H inverse given this matrix H. You can pause right now and try that and then start it back up and see if you got the correct answer. Okay, so hopefully that did not take you too long. The first thing I did was, well, the first thing I did was write this fancy symbol for inverse. And there you go. Then I did the determinant, which I got out here was negative 4. Watch out for subtracting a negative. I put that determinant down here, 1 divided by negative 4. And then I uh, multiplied by this matrix, which happens the 2 and the negative 5 swap places, and the negative 1 and the 6 become their opposites. And that's it. Some people probably just left it like this. I personally do not like negatives to be in the denominator, so I I wrote it like this, which I think is mathematically more sound, where the negative is kind of floated on up to the top. Either one of these is actually acceptable, but I prefer the one that I just boxed in. Thanks for playing.